do you want to know what the worst attraction in Orlando is? We're going to talk about it today, unfortunately. On Annual Pass. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Annual Pass. This is the podcast where we talk about all things theme parks, attractions, shows, rides, horrible, horrible rides, and more. I am your host, Jack Patillo, and of course, joined... Joining with me, as always, I lost it there. I got so distracted by the horrible ride. Is my lovely, beautiful, talented family co-host Jeff Ramsey. Hi, Jeffrey. You know, oh, hello, Jack. Hi, Jeff. Through the power of editing, we can take multiple takes. Nah, nah. Okay, what's the what's one, the fun one in that? take? Patillo. I'm not say. infallible. Come on now. <laughs> I'm, I'm allowed to make mistakes. Hi, everyone. Thanks for listening and watching Annual Pass. You go to YouTube.com/slash Annual Pass and watch us over there live. And uh, you can see Jeff wearing our, our beautiful Ogre Vision 3D glasses. Now I get the Jimmy Kimmel thing. <laughs> <laughs> I can't say Jimmy Fallon. Jimmy. Oh, man. I guess, you, you, I guess he hashtagged the bear or whatever. <sighs> we got a fun one today. Uh, we are doing a long-awaited attraction that people have been asking for for a long, long time that I am not excited to talk about. Well, maybe I am excited to talk about because I'm talking about it with you. We are doing Fa- Magic Mountain. Fast and Furious Supercharge. Oh, that's one of your favorite rides. Oh, God. That was the attraction. It's at Universal Studios, Hollywood, and Florida. Uh, the attraction that... Uh, it's so bad that I was like, I knew you were going to go on it and be like all ironic. Like, yeah, that was so good. And it was so bad. You couldn't even do that. No, I couldn't. Yeah. yeah. I mean, now I've had enough time where I, I'm far enough away from it when I can kind of, uh, remember it that way. Yeah. But no, I remember getting off and going like, all right, I'm not even gonna make a joke. Yeah. I get yeah. it. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, should we just, just dive right into it? Oh, yeah, don't forget to uh, watch this over at YouTube.com slash Annual Pass. Join our Discord server as well. Uh, we got the, uh, the running group over there, which is the Rope Drop Run Club, Jeff. Uh, drop. Oh, is that what you guys chose? Yeah, rope, rope Drop Run Club? Rope, dro- rope Drop Running Club. RDRC? RDRC. 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 I like it. That's the one to go with. So come join us over there and uh, get in on a 5K. We're, we're working on possibly doing an RTX 5K, so uh, hey, you can join us for that. Jack, I don't often get the opportunity to speak directly to the audience. So I'm yeah, go ahead. And put, in this. D- take Do your I have time. Go ahead. Just a, a piece of your domain? Absolutely. Just, go for it. It's our domain. Uh, I just wanted to say uh, nobody's buying the pin set, and if we don't sell them, they won't make let us make any more. We love this thing, the starter the starter kit, the, the pin set, the lanyard, and the four pins. They're awesome. You can grab it at store.roosteeth.com right now. I shouldn't say nobody's buying it, no, but we have, we have we, a lot left. Maybe we bought too many, <clears throat> yeah. but uh, it would sure be sweet and lovely if people it's a, it's a really liked good them. Set. I think it's a, good, it's a good value, good price. Uh, they gave me a gray beard, which I like because I'm, <laughs> I'm definitely, dude, I, uh, yeah, shaved my beard down the other day and it was just all gray on the ground. Oh no. Yeah. I trimmed mine up the other day. Mine is not nearly this red anymore or this orange anymore. I've got, I've got a big old patch of white on my chin now. Uh, I'm getting old, Jeff. I'm getting old. I'm surrounded. We, we did a photo shoot the other day with a bunch of people we work with. Yeah, we did. Just a bunch of young kids. It was you <laughs> and I and a bunch of people half our age. I was, uh, similarly, one of those people, new Achievement Hunter guys, Joe, who yeah, I like yeah. very much, I was on a different podcast with him, and we got to talking about age, and I'm 21 years older than him. <laughs> <laughs> He's, I'm almost twice as old you as You could him. legally drink before he was alive. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, it's it's frightening. It's frightening. Those kids are young. So Anyway, pin sets are cool. Pin sets. Grab a pin set. Store.roosterteeth.com. Uh, we also have shirts up there as well. We have some really, really cool annual pass merchandise. I love our merchandise. I'm very, very happy with it. Any 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 additional revenue that can help Jack get over get over this final hump to the AARP line when things start to get cheaper <laughs> for him. Those discounts are just around the corner. I'm just waiting for that Denny's breakfast, you know, the senior discount on it. Uh, what else? Any other things I need to talk about? I think that's, I think this should be I just good. want to talk about Dominic Toretta and, and the family. Dominic Toretta? Dominic Toretto? Toretto. No. A would make it a feminine. O is the masculine. And isn't that in Spanish or in the Romance languages? Mm-hmm. A gato versus a gata. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You just, you just foiled, you just spilled the entire plot of Batman. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, let's talk fast and furious supercharged. What a ride, Jeff. Uh, Let's see here. This is from the Universal website. Join the family. Join the ride. Join the crew for an immersive fast and furious experience. Step into an amazing recreation of the crew's headquarters filled with actual movie props and supercharged vehicles you've only seen on the big screen. Ride along with Dom, Letty, Hobbs, and Roman on a street chase in the middle of a high-octane world of the fast and furious blockbuster films. 
Doesn't that sound exciting, Jeff? I'm I'm I, I pause at the actual movie props because yeah. if I remember that, it was like, was it just a pile of carburetors in the corner? It, um, there, I think there's one or two cars in there okay, that they actually okay. may have used. In, I mean, there's been nine movies now, or no, ten if you count Hobbs and Shaw. There's yeah, and so the the sheer number of vehicles used across those movies, I'm sure they're like that one. Put it in them and put it in the thing. How'd you feel about Hobbs and Shaw? I, I enjoyed it. I, I thought it was the best Fast and the Furious movie in the last like three or four. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I watch. I wa- recently watched nine, and wow. Okay, I, know, I, know. I, I do. I, I appreciate they've kind of just like you know they they understand that this is no longer. It is completely devoid from or divorced from reality. Do you remember what the uh, the heist was in the very first movie? Like what they were stealing. Because the whole thing was they were stealing stuff and the truckers started shooting back. It was like DVD players or something? DVD players and stereos yeah. out of a back of a, an 18-wheeler. Yeah. That, that's where they, And now they're literally in space. <laughs> Wait, they, they put Ludacris and Tyrese in space. Sure. Why not? So... Uh, I can't wait for the aliens in 10. Oh, man. You good. know that's coming. Absolutely. They're going to crystal skull it. We're going to Mars. We got family on Mars. <laughs> They're gonna go rescue Matt sister. Damon. <laughs> oh man. Uh, so anyway, if you don't know what Fast and Furious is, obviously it's a you know a franchise from Universal. It turns out it's actually Universal's number one franchise ever. Like they they've made more money off that. Take a guess as to how much money the Fast and Furious franchise that has made. Doesn't surprise me at all. By the way, uh, I would guess that it's made four billion dollars. It's made more than that. Uh, okay, so that's not right. Uh, the Fast and Furious from Box Office Mojo. Wow, that's a site I haven't been to in a while. Uh, we used to go there every day to argue. It's it's something like over $6 billion. Yeah. I feel like for the first maybe two years of the uh, RT podcast, back when it was called The Drunk Tank, Box Office Mojo was like the fourth podcast member. <laughs> yeah, we uh, we would go through that quite a bit. But yeah, like the Fast and Franchise uh <laughs> Fast and Franchise. Hey, Fast you're and, fallible. Yeah, hey, there we go. Uh, the Fast and Furious franchise has made something like over 6 billion dollars across all the movies. That's like Dora the Explorer territory. That is wh- what? <laughs> you ever seen how much Dora the Explorer made? No. In like 50 and then like it's an initial like 40 episode run or whatever and yeah. made over 4 billion dollars. Jeez. Yeah, they took the information off Wikipedia. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. Uh, th- much better than this, I'm I'm assuming. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, so obviously, Fast and Furious doing very very well. Universal's like, hey, we should probably make an attraction based around Fast and Furious. Uh, what we know now is supercharged. There was an attraction they were kicking around before. Uh, that when they knew they were losing Back to the Future. Mm-hmm. Uh, Why were they losing it? I think the, I don't know if the license was up or they're just like it's time to refresh. Or it was just time to time to yeah. You know. So when when they were closing it down, um, the the big thing. So it's now the Simpsons attraction, but the actual building has two screens in it mm-hmm. so they can run two different sets of you know cars at a time because each of those screens is the big IMAX dome where it's like motion simulator and stuff and makes you feel like you're in the movie mm. so they had two of them they shut down one of them and they were doing tests in the in the empty one and they had two different things up running and testing they had a Simpsons attraction and they had a Fast and Furious attraction as well so they were thinking maybe we'll replace Back to the Future with you know with uh, Fast and Furious it makes a lot of sense it's a car it's moving around can go all kinds of different degrees then something happened, Jeff. First Fast and Furious movie made a whole lot of money. Second Fast and Furious oddly made a whole lot of money. Did it really? It did. Third Fast and Furious movie did not make a lot of money. And Universal's like, uh-oh. Uh, hmm. Well, the but third one was Tokyo two, Drift? Yeah, Tokyo Drift. Yeah. It, it was uh, three Fast, three Furious. And so Universal's like, well, let's put The Simpsons in here, and we'll figure out Fast and Furious later. And because at that point, they didn't know if they were going to do anything else with it, right? Mm, yeah. And so they're like, all right, well, you know, so The Simpsons went up, and then years passed, and then Fast, uh, The Fast and The Furious, I think it was the fourth one, came out. Return to form. And that brought back Vin Diesel and Paul Walker, and then Fast Five became a phenomenon, and yeah. they were like, we need to get on this. We need to, we need to put So Fast something. Five was out before... Supercharged came out. I believe so. Supercharged came out in 2015. So that was only, God, that's seven years ago now. I don't know when when it actually. Uh, I didn't realize Fast it was, Five came out in 2011. I, there you go. Yeah, I didn't realize it was that Thank new. You, in my like Fast Five, I feel it was like my return to the franchise. Yeah, I had I hadn't cared about Fast and Furious in a long time. Fast Five had one of the most incredible chase scenes yeah, at the yeah. end with, with, with the, the uh, with safe. the safe. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Fast Five came out in 2011. Fast and Furious Six came out in 2013, and then Furious Seven came out in 2015 when Supercharged. Okay. Came out. When uh when how much money did Fast Five make? Okay, uh, Fast Five made two hundred nine million dollars domestic. I, I uh, lifetime gross. I'm assuming that's domestic. Yeah, 
Yeah, these, these things make a lot of money. People like seeing fast cars and Vin Diesel. <laughs> so, well, the, visually that movie was actually plot wise that movie was pretty good too. Yeah, like Fast Five is a solid movie start to finish. Fast Five is that the one where where the Rock shows up for the first time? Yeah, it's the first Rock one. Yeah, it's where they're in. Uh, I, I want to say maybe, Bra- maybe Brazil, Brazil or Argentina right? or Sao Paulo or something, which is which is Brazil. Brazil yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah. So. Anyway, we're getting distracted by Fast and Furious facts. Facts and Furious. Well, that's what I mean. It's all a part of the the grand melange that is. uh, So at this point, Universal's like, all right, the the, the Fast and Furious isn't going anywhere. Let's open an attraction. And they were like, let's get something up fast. So the very first thing they put up was uh, in Universal Hollywood as part of the backlot tour. Which is the thing that goes around the back a lot, Back mm-hmm. to the Future. Which know, I've done. Yeah, it's a, it's a great attraction. Tons of stuff in it. Jaws is in there. You know, they they you know King Kong used to be there before the it burned down. Uh, the mummy with the big spinning thing as well, right? Is that you're talking about, like the big mummy tube? Yeah, where the, the you go through the tube and it spins and yeah. it shoots water at you. Yeah, and it feels like you're about to fall over. And they say it's scarabs or whatever, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so that one. Uh, so they were like, we need to add something to that. So what they did was they added something called uh, the Fast and the Furious Extreme Close-Up. So, sounds exciting, not exciting. So, uh, you basically, the, uh, the the tram would pull into this sort of, like, horseshoe-shaped arena with two cars, and then uh, you would hear audio. I think it was around, maybe it was, maybe that, maybe, I don't know when that one came out. I, I didn't write that one down, but you'd hear cars and, like, people talking and stuff, and then all of a sudden there was, like, gunshots and an explosion, and these two cars would lift up and fly towards the tram and then stop, and then it, they would do a car ballet, <laughs> Literally, there were cars on Kuka arms, which are those big robot arms, and they would move them around and spin them to music. Were you in the cars? No, uh. no, you were just watching them. And uh, well, ha- and so it was like, how does that oh. make sense? Y- exactly. And so it's like, what? And it was kind of the first time ever they had really used those Kuka arms to like that. And these were the ones that were on a moving base, mm-hmm. um, which ultimately that is the kind of ride system they use for the Harry Potter ride. The uh, the one in, in Universal. Oh well, in that case, I hate it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and I, you know, there's going to be Universal Monsters one. The uh, they're using that same technology mm-hmm. as well, so you're going to hate you're going to hate that one as well. It's going to be lots of fun. So uh, yeah, obviously not as exciting as people thought it was going to be. Fast and the Furious Extreme Close Up certainly uh, doesn't sound supercharged. No, no. Uh, yeah, it was. It, was uh, it, did, it didn't do a whole lot in that one, and it's kind of spun around. People were they were whelmed by the thing. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I was very like, whelming. Yeah. And so I was like, well, let's let, OK. Well, well, let's get something else going. So the spinning tunnel thing, they tore it down, Jeff. They tore it down and began building up a brand new attraction that was going to be the finale of the backlot tour. And so, uh, yeah. And that's where they built this giant arena or this giant building inside. They had like a little scene at the beginning and then like a, a, a second scene with like a, like a party scene and then this giant room with a 360 wraparound screen or like maybe 270 wraparound screen uh, that, you know, is one of the I think it's supposedly the largest 3D projection map screen on the planet at the really? time or something along those lines. Um, that is that's also a thing too. The one in Hollywood, you got 3D glasses to go along with it. So the whole thing's in 3D. Oh. The one in Florida, not in 3D. Does it make a, an appreciable difference? Um, from what I understand, yes. It actually, oh, you've not actually, done the one in LA. I think I may have, but it was so forgettable <laughs> that I I forgot it. Uh, the the one and so that's the one in in in, uh, in Hollywood and the one in Orlando they actually uh, tore down two amazing attractions Beetlejuice's Graveyard Review which we talked about in the past and Disaster which was formerly known as Earthquake uh, which is one of my favorite attractions ever I love that attraction so much and they tore both of them down and built up a giant building and uh, you thought like maybe okay they're gonna do something different because you know when they built up Universal Orlando they took three attractions. From the backlot tour, they took King Kong, they took Jaws, and they took Earthquake, and they turned them into individual attractions mm-hmm. at you know in Orlando. They made they expanded upon them, yeah. made them bigger, made them better. Thought maybe well, let's do the same thing. We got the Fast and Furious thing. Let's make it bigger. Okay, cool. And then um, they didn't. <laughs> they, they didn't bother with the uh, making bigger and better. Um, they did add a queue. They added a brand new queue, which takes you through Sullivan's Garage, which is the 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 Toretto Hangout. Um, You get to go to the break room, which is the family room, according to Mia, and then the war room, which is Tej's war room, and then uh, into the party bus, because obviously you have to get a new ride vehicle. It's not uh, it's not the tram. They have a party bus that Tej built for you to go to the party, the after party, because Dom's out racing, Jeff. Oh, man, I'm remembering it. Yep. You're telling it. And then, uh, yeah. And so we'll we'll get into the ride through in a minute. 
Uh, yeah, I don't have a lot on this one because uh, pretty much everything I looked up was just people, you know, talking smack on it. Yeah. Uh, theme park history actually had a really good uh, rant slash history of it. If you want to really get into the the uh, depth of it, um, there was a big opening in Florida. Had uh, Vin Diesel was there and a few other people. The one in, the one in Hollywood, they actually drove a car through a building like they drove Dom's charger through. I threw a, 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 a like a road sign, like a Fast and Furious sign. He like busted through it. It's kind of cool. And it was like everyone was there. It was like Tyrese was there. Um, Michelle Rodriguez was there. Vin Diesel was there. I think even uh, The Rock may have been there for the opening of it. Wow. And uh, yeah. And he, uh, he's not a, n- not a fan of this franchise anymore, as I No, he's not. As uh, I hear. So starring in the show, you've got Vin Diesel as Dominic Toretto, Michelle Rodriguez as Letty Ortiz, Tyrese Gibson as Roman Pierce, Dwayne Johnson as Luke Hobbs, Luke Evans as Owen Shaw, who's the villain of mm, this one, which mm-hmm. I think he's Fast 7 or Fast and Furious 7 was when he popped up. And so um, this theoretically takes place kind of in that in that time frame. Okay. I don't know if it's canon to the Fast and Furious universe, but uh, I hope so. It, it would be odd if suddenly in eight they mention, oh, yeah, we had that. We had now expanded our family by 500 people who were, you know, on that party <laughs> on the bus. party bus. Yeah. And then uh, Luke Evans is Owen. OK, Luke Evans is Owen Shaw. And then in the Orlando version, you've got Ludacris as Tej Parker and uh, Jordana Brewster as Mia Toretto. So they're only in the um, the one in Orlando. Oh, that's yeah. interesting. And there's also an agent who's uh, I don't know who he is. He's uh, another actor who's just terrible and they redubbed his voice and it doesn't it just feels so wrong it's so bad like really? he, like his voice doesn't match his body at all i wonder why they did that i don't know hey guys we're gonna take a short little break here during the episode to tell you about today's sponsors of annual pass and we're gonna start with honey i love honey it is a it's it's a thing i've used for a very long time i love you too sweetie oh you're so sweet chef uh honey is a great great program to save you money via coupon codes on all kinds of websites i'm doing this all off the top of my head i've got bullet points here that's okay because i've been using honey literally for years it is awesome it's super super simple you just go we'll give you a link in the description i'm going to tell you what it is right now it's joinhoney.com slash annual pass go there you just hit a little install button. It installs it on your browser. And then anytime you go to a website that you want to buy something, a little honey thing will pop up and say, do you want us to search for codes? And you hit yes or scan or whatever the button says. And it'll just rattle through any of the codes that honey knows. It has a giant library of thousands and thousands and thousands of coupon codes across various sites. And it's going to save you money. That's right. It's super easy. It's one of those things you don't even think about. Like, hey, maybe I'm going to a website to like register a, a URL, like a domain. And it's like, oh, wow, there's like 20 codes. And it hits it and scans through all of them. And if it finds multiple, it'll tell you the best one. If you're on Amazon or somewhere like that, if you're buying something somewhere, it'll be like, hey, now's a good time to buy. Or like, here's a chart of all different prices and stuff. It's, it is really, really cool. I can't express how awesome Honey is and, I, and how long I've been using it now. Like, I genuinely, like, this is, this is one of the things that I have, I have a lot of experience with because I have saved myself a lot of money. And we want you to save a lot of money as well by going to joinhoney.com slash annual pass, putting it into your web browser, and just using it. It's free. It doesn't cost you anything to, to get it, to add it to your browser. And uh, it, is, it is absolutely fantastic. Highly recommend it. It's got my seal of approval, which should mean everything. I, not really. It, it, it's, it's good. It's good. Joinhoney.com slash annual pass. Go check it out today. Joinhoney.com slash annual pass. This episode of Annual Pass is also sponsored by Green Chef. What is Green Chef, you might say? It is the most sustainable meal kit that is out there. Enjoy your greens while being green. Green Chef is the most sustainable meal kit, offsetting 100% of their plastic packaging in every box and 100% of their carbon footprint and emissions. That's awesome. They're helping, uh, you know, keep the planet in a good place. Green Chef's pre-proportioned ingredients means you'll actually reduce your food waste by at least 25% compared to grocery shopping. Because I know I always end up with way too much extra stuff after going grocery shopping. Or I'm like, hey, why did I buy this? Oh, I forgot to use it. Uh Uh-oh. And then I have to toss it because it's expired or something. So this is not the case with Green Chef. They give you everything you need. And I don't know about you, but uh, I'm excited. I've I've got my Green Chef box in now. I know I've got a, a chicken and butternut squash uh, dish that looks absolutely incredible that I'm, I'm very, very excited to give a shot. And also, uh, some ground pork egg roll bowls, which is just fun to say ground pork egg roll bowls. 
Hmm. I have no idea how it's going to taste, but I imagine it's going to be very, very good. And I'm excited to give it a shot. With fresh produce, premium proteins, and organic ingredients you can trust, Green Chef is the number one meal kit for eating well. Green Chef makes cooking easy so you can spend less time stressing and more time enjoying delicious home-cooked meals because they do most of the hard work for you. And most of it's just sorting out what you need, and they send it all to you right there. Uh, Green Chef is America's number one meal kit for eating well with dinners that work for you, not the other way around. Green Chef's options for every lifestyle include keto plus paleo, vegan, vegetarian, fast and fit, Mediterranean, and gluten-free. Now, today, you can save $130 and get free shipping by going to greenchef.com slash annualpass130 and use code annualpass130. That is greenchef.com slash annualpass130. Use that code annualpass130 to get $130 off and free shipping. It's awesome. I'm excited to eat so, uh, you know, I've been, I've been working out. I'm trying to eat healthier. So this is going to be good for me and it could be good for you too. Check it out. Greenchef.com slash annual pass 130 code annual pass 130. Okay. Let's get back to the episode and talk more about fast and furious. Uh, do we have to, I don't know. So, well, Jeff, uh, that's kind of the, uh, the real brief overview of fast and furious supercharger. Are you ready to relive our experience? This is this is going to be exciting. You can add to it, Jeff, because you've been there. You've you've been on this attraction, Jeff. So you, so since we've both already done it, can uh-huh. we just fast forward and say no? Because there might be people out there, Jeff. <laughs> okay. That uh, that we might be not... saving somebody from seeing this ride in person. Exactly. Exactly. All right. So are are you ready, Jeff? Yes, I am. Let's go to the Orlando version of it because okay. I have that one. That video popped up right I'll here, take right my now. Three D goggles right? off. Okay. Are you ready? Well, you don't. You don't. Well, I guess you know. You take them. You leave them off because we're in Florida. All right. Ready. Here we go. <clears throat> Jeff. Yeah. Jeff, we're in Orlando. Are you at Universal Studios in Orlando? We're having such a great day! <laughs> We're having so much fun. Nothing can get me down today, Jeff. We're in a theme park in Florida. And yeah, they've been here in days. It's been weeks, Jeff. All right. Well, hey, we've got we've done some really fun rides so far. Uh, do you want to go do one? I, it's been a while since I've been on it. It's Fast and Furious Supercharged. Jeff, you want to go on it? Please hit play. I'm sick of looking at this guy's bald head. Okay, we're okay, Jeff. Okay, no, we're, we're, still there. We, we gotta we gotta walk through the queue, Jeff. Okay, okay, okay. okay so we're going through the queue. Oh, and with like, all the other people excited to see the, to ride on this ride. Oh boy, everyone, you guys are every, in for a treat. Everyone's excited. Hey, Jeff, we're outside. Look, it's the it's the grill. It's the Toretto family grill, the one they, oh, they cook yeah. on. And look, they have all of the uh the they're not they're not Coronas. What would they be? They because they they're knockoffs. It's like Smaronas. Smaronas. <laughs> Everybody drinking their Smaronas. They, they left them out on the table. Why would they do that? Okay, let's go inside. Jeff, we're in the garage. Oh, wow. Well, look. look at all these cars, Jeff. Look at all look at all, people in line. Isn't this crazy? They, these are the, props. from. Look at those carburetors. Those are from the movie. Well, carburetors. Wow, look at this truck. It's a big, weird truck thing. Hey, Jeff, look, it's ludicrous. It's, I mean, Tej is on the wall. And he's oh, like, yeah. hey, guys, welcome to welcome to the place where we got to have, have a party. You're going to come to the party. That's a really good ludicrous. Nah, I've been working on it for, for, for yeah. months. Uh, and it, Wow, Jeff, that's okay. So it was like, we're going to have a party. There's music playing. It's like, Turn down for what? Okay, okay, Jeff, let's go to the family room. That's what I hear Dom mm. calls it. Okay, it's like a break room thing, and we have a person here, and he's like, hey, uh, welcome to the family. And, oh, here, here's Mia. And Mia's like, hi, everybody, family. And it's like, okay, Mia, family. I feel, I feel like family. we're in Olive Garden right and now, it's Jack. It's like, yeah, family, family, breadsticks, family. And it's like, okay, Mia, we a family. Okay, we get it, Mia, family. All right, so much family. And then he's like, okay, you're going to go to the war room now. We go to the war room. Jeff, we're in the war room. Oh, no, it turns out things are bad. Oh, no. We were, we were just going for a party, Jeff, and now there, apparently there's like bad things happening, and we're not supposed to have cell phones. I think is what they said. Remember, they like, said like don't don't put out your cell phone. Oh right, turn G- it off. G- GPS trackers and stuff. Yeah, sure, trackers. And it's like okay, but we're getting the party bus. We're gonna hide you out at Sullivan's garage <laughs> where the party's going on. They'll never look for us at the party. No, they'll never look for us at the the hangout of uh, of not- the people of notorious Dominic Toretto. It's like okay, cool. Okay, Jeff, let's go to the party bus. Jeff, we're on the party bus. <laughs> music <laughs> playing. <laughs> music <laughs> playing. Lights are going. Oh my gosh, look at all these lights. All right, Jeff. It's going to be a rager. Look, we're, okay, we're immediately we're driving down this long hallway and it feels like we're going so fast. Yeah, yeah well, things we are. are like blasting by. It's like whoosh, 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 so fast. We got the fast part. Where's okay. the furious? All right, Jeff. Okay, so now we've made it around. Oh, look, it's 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 ludicrous. And he's like, oh, hey, guys, there's thing, bad things are happening. Don't worry. And then uh, then also, oh, look, it's it's The Rock. I mean, what's his name? It, he's like, hey, uh, he's like, yeah, yeah, no, we're going to protect you. Don't worry. Hobbs. Just, yeah, Hobbs. He's like, hey, we're going to protect you. Just be careful. There's, he's, he's like, have you seen Calvin? <laughs> 
<laughs> All right. Okay. So we got past that. We got past that. Now, Jeff, we're going out. Look, we're on like the street. It kind of looks like great. Oh, yeah, it looks look like, at all the, the, the air conditioners. It's like great movie ride a little bit. Yeah. Like those cars. I think those are the ground effects. Those are the cars from the movie, I think. But now oh, look, it's a friends. party. Woo! Woo! Well, yeah. Look at that party. Lots of people partying. Oh, we're Woo! having so much fun. You know, doesn't your garage have like light, like glow up lights like that that yeah, all change yeah, colors and just, stuff? And then everyone's like, he's like, hey, no, get out of here. Get out of here. It's like, bad things are happening. And then Tyrese is there. And the guy's like, oh, the guy's like, hey, you're under arrest because I'm here. To, I'm here to take you in. And Tyrese is like, what? No, we're having a party. Yeah, we're, just having, a- we're just having a lot of fun. And then all of a sudden, out of the ground, Jeff, out of the ground, like a rising phoenix. It's it's Michelle Rodriguez and Vin Diesel, Dominic and, and Letty. Where? They, I don't see them. They, they appear from the ground. I, you, we, it doesn't have to be timed to the video. The audience doesn't know we're watching a video right oh, now. Oh, there they are. Boom. Look at that. They come from the ground. Why would they just be standing there like that? That makes no sense at all. He must have a limitless supply of white t-shirts. <laughs> and the guy's like, but I've got a gun. And then and then The Rock shows up and he says, I've got a bigger <laughs> gun. And then he smiles. Do you think any of these people were in the same room together? No, I don't, <laughs> I, don't know that they've, I don't know if they were in the same room together when they filmed the movie. Yeah, and then there goes The Rock and he's like, okay, I'm going to take off. And then he's like, uh-oh, i got a call. And Letty's like, no, you you got a call. Now they can track us. And now then you hear cars coming. And then and then Dom's like, uh-oh, hey, we, we got a ride. But I, your, your family will protect you. I like that Dom and... And, and Michelle Rodriguez are standing there f- cheating camera <laughs> like they're in our town. <laughs> it's very theater, very high school theater. <laughs> they're going to bust into a musical yeah. all of a sudden. And uh, it's, it's going to be called Our Family. Okay, so now they sit down and think, but it's like that Pepper's Ghost effect, Jeff, where it's like that's a real truck there, but then but the projection is not, so cool. it's not real. Okay, Jeff, we're moving on. Okay, we're going to hide out in this parking garage. We've moved forward. We're going to hide out in this parking garage. They'll never look for us there. They'll never look for us there, Jeff. This will be safe in the parking garage, is what they say. They say, yeah. well, Whenever a tornado comes, get to a parking garage. Or whenever you know Luke Evans shows up, oh there he is, Luke Evans is here. Oh, he's, he's got, got a, a sh- he's got a flamethrower. Flame oh my gosh! But Dom hit him with his car, and that would have killed any human. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now we're off, Jeff. We're we're going. Here we go. We've busted out of the parking garage. Now we're on. We're in Los Angeles City Street. Ah! Jack, we found the Furious. We're we're moving. We're we're fast. Like oh god! Gotcha. Now we've got on all sides of us, Jeff. There's chaos happening. There's it's, it's, somebody call the cops. It's Letty, Letty, and uh, Tyrese are gonna hook us up to these Where'd trucks. Where they get the flatbed trailer from? And they're they're pulling it. That's the super. That's the turbo truck that they're doing now. And here we go, Jeff. Okay, so now that they've hooked us on, so we're keeping it up for speed. But uh, Sean has been. They're attacking Jeff. Oh no! They're everywhere. They're surrounding us. They're surrounding us now. He's got drones and he's pointing at us. And now he's flying through the air. Somehow they got a, a big old like truck. With with a grabby thing yeah, on it. Yeah, yeah. And, and also, he's not dead yet for some reason. Why are they mad at us? I don't know. But now there's like a drone helicopter shooting rockets, Jeff. Watch out! Watch out, Jeff! What? That obviously, like, oh, there's Dom. He's on a helicopter. What? <laughs> he's flying through the sky. Why? Why is he grabbing onto? That seems like a mistake. How does he? <laughs> and then there's the rock in his big truck with his 50 cal. Oh, we're gonna make a jump, Jeff. Wee! Big jump. Go. Oh, that's where that. This explains the supply chain issues. All the shipping containers are stuck here in uh, the firefight. Jeff, we did it. We survived. That was it. Oh. That was the whole attraction. That was the attraction. That was it. And the Ted's just like, all right, now we're gonna have a party. Now it's time to turn down. For what? And it's like, no, that's not right. Or he goes, well, he says something. He says one of his famous lines. What? What? What is Ludacris's famous line? T- uh, what up? It's Ludacris. <laughs> that's exactly. Y'all that's, ready to party? That's exactly. It's that- party time with Ludacris. Yeah, yeah. That's exactly what he says. And then everyone's like, we did it, you guys. Good job. Party starting now. And the party bus starts its lights up, Blah. and then we roll back to the beginning. What was that song? Until <laughs> the end. And then, uh, and then everyone's like, "Yeah, hey, welcome hey, to the party! Best ride ever! Hey, hey, welcome hey, to the party!" Hey, cool. And then we get out and we go to the gift shop, and we see a re- re- recreation of. And Donald's we keep Charger. our wallets in our pockets. Oh my gosh, <sighs> that, is, that is such a bad ride. <laughs> That so, was as exhilarating as it was the first time. It is such a a, a short attraction. The actual wow. the actual video, like the so forty five seconds. It's it's something like a minute. It's not yeah. very long. It's it's very short. Um, so the way it works is basically your your party bus rolls out onto this platform and then kind of locks in place, mm. and then it sort of just rocks you back and forth, and they blast you with smoke and air to make you feel like you're moving. As a matter of fact, the, the most realistic thing is right at the very beginning when you first take off, it's like you're driving really 
fast. And they, they have like lights projected on the side. Hmm. That actually feels like you're moving really fast. Like, oh, yeah. that's kind of cool. Yeah. And then you round the corner in that weird like alley scene. And then before you go into the video, before you get into the party. And it's like, oh, okay. And then literally from pulling into the party to the to that ride itself, that is 100% just ripped exactly from Hollywood. Like they didn't change up anything. Really? Yeah. And so it's like they just, I mean, they could, they didn't do other than the intro with like the tunnel and the sort of outdoor scene. It's identical to the one in Hollywood, which is one of multiple attractions on the backlot tour. So it makes no sense at all that they would just not not do anything with that. I got some fun facts. Oh boy, uh, there are fifteen different vehicles inside the queue, like inside the uh, like all the little loading area. How are many they, can you name? Uh, none. I guess there's the turbo truck is in there. Yeah, that's one of the ones that uh, that Letty and and Tyrese are on the back of. Wow. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, but also in the queue they have a bunch of like Easter eggs and stuff. So. There's some Easter eggs of former attractions, including uh, there's a Beetlejuice little like bobblehead. Uh, there is a disaster jacket, like one of the ones they used to wear on the show. Uh, there's an earthquake uh, keychain like, at one point. Cool. Yeah, and then there's actually a Back to the Future uh, license plate over in like one spot too. It's like out of time, and so oh. you can spot that. Which you know, it's kind of a cool reference because like that wouldn't make sense, but it's like oh, if you knew they are, they almost put it over Back to the Future. Right, right. It's kind of cool. The uh, the pre show hosts. So you have two rooms you go through. You have the family room, which is the break room, and then the, and the war, war room. room. Yeah. Um, they actually you have character hosts there that actually kind of walk you through it. Um, well, those people mm-hmm. are excited about their jobs. Well, when it first opened, they took it very seriously. It was very scripted out, very like you're interacting with the characters, and it was like very kind of dramatic type stuff. Uh, since then, they've sort of made it their own, and they yeah. understand how crappy the ride is and they sort of just sort of make fun of it along with you it's very great it's, they do a great job it's pretty funny um the uh the hosts so because it's you know mia and tej are talking to the hosts the host names are pat and jamie which are very uh ambiguous names so yeah, yeah, yeah they sure. can literally put up any person there so pat and jamie which actually my, my parents are pat and janie so close uh what else here <laughs> i didn't realize your parents could potentially be in the Toretto crime uh, that, family. Yeah, absolutely. You know, you've seen my dad. He drives cars. <laughs> like, <laughs> totally be in that. Uh, during the interview, this is funny. During an interview at the IAAP, the IAPA Expo in 2021, that's the big like our amusement Still expo. Still waiting for our invites. Uh, this, was, this is the last year. This is recently. Regarding the creation of the Amazing Adventures of Spider-Man, uh, Universal Creative Senior Vice President and CCO uh, Terry Koo admitted the approval of the Florida attraction of Fast and Furious Supercharge was to be the quote biggest mistake of his career. Wow. Yeah. This is this is the CCO saying, yeah, that was a mistake. Bad. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So uh that's pretty interesting that he's he owned it. I mean it's like, wow. I mean that's there was a lot of money went into building that thing. And he's like, well, that was a huge mistake. I wonder if they've made that money. Like um, if it's I'm sure it's profitable at this point. I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know the full cost of how much I mean, that thing was. That building is enormous. There has so. to be some sort of actuary table where it makes sense for them to continue running the ride. Yeah. Otherwise, they would have replaced it with a, for, I don't know, a, I was going to say a hotter property, but Fast is still a very hot property. I, I mean, so. it's, it's wild because when they were building this building, everyone was assuming like, oh, inside it must be like some kind of racetrack mm-hmm. or something. Yeah. Like, There's um, a lot of fun things you could do with Yeah, I mean, Fast people are thinking like, like the mummy, how that's set up, you know, it's kind of like a mix of like scenes and then mm-hmm. roller coaster, even like. Um, the Gringotts, like Escape from Gringotts, same deal where it's like, like very Escape fast. Gringotts, yeah. yeah, it's like it's like it's a quick attraction, but there's also like narrative to it. It's got to be something like that, or even like Transformers or Spider Man, where it's like, oh, okay, like there's a lot of cool stuff moving around because you know, like the scoop vehicles are on the those those crazy things where they can spin them and move them and bank them. It's a it's a car movie. You figure you'd be in a car, right? Yeah. No, we're in no. a party bus. <laughs> um. Speaking of which, I, I, I'm not I'm not positive on this, but I think the party buses are on the same technology that they use for the uh, the uh, King Kong uh, rise or Rise of Kong Skull Island or whatever mm, it is, because mm. um, they're they're automated, like they're they're autonomous and they do move around and stuff. And th- th- at the front of the bus, it looks like you have a driver, but it's just a, a, a mannequin with a head on it, like with with like a, a wig on. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so I think it's the same vehicle. I'm not 100 percent positive on. It. I mean, obviously it's been you know like polished up a little bit. You know, the one in Kong yeah. looks a bit more rugged, whereas this one's more of a party bus with lights, woo, and, and music. Beep, beep, doo, doo, beep, doo. It's, anyway, uh, let's see here. Anything else? Uh, Dude, I didn't realize DJ Junk was going to make an appearance today. That's pretty cool. <laughs> But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Again, uh, check out the Theme Park History's uh, rant, rant slash review of Supercharge. It's pretty funny. And he, he gets into a lot more of the specifics of the creation of it. And if you haven't ridden it, 
uh, maybe go out and do it because who knows how much longer it, uh, of a lifespan it has. So, admit- although there's been nothing uh, announced to say that it's in danger. No, right? no, it's, it's it's. I mean, they're doing Epic Universe right now, yeah. so they they have no room to tear down anything yeah. like anything really massive. They're busy, tearing busy, down busy. Uh, like. Or they were tearing down the Fast and Fear or the uh, uh, Fear Factor stage, but apparently now it's been put on hold. So who knows what's going on with that? Um, this actually came. This was there was a run where Universal had a rough patch of of new attractions. They had this. They had Jimmy Fallon, <sighs> and there was another one. But basically, they had a lot of screen attractions, and mm. it was kind of like, eh. and then they kind of got away from that, and they put up. Uh, that's when they started doing. They did like uh, Hagrid's Motorbike Adventure and Velocicoaster, and they're. I think Universal is kind of like they're back. They've, they've yeah. got their their mojo back now. They're building well, Epic if, Universe, and it's going to be fun. If Velocicoaster is any indication, they are definitely back. Yeah, yeah. So uh, this one definitely. Uh, as, as speaking of uh, Jimmy Fallon, this actually not. <laughs> this uh, at like Jimmy Fallon. Uh, this also had a virtual queue set up for it uh, that people were going to go. You check in, come back whenever it's your turn to go ride it. So that way you could kind of walk through yeah. and, you know, take your time with it. Uh, but there was never long enough lines <laughs> to necessitate that. It was never longer than like a 10 to 30 minute wait. So yeah. they just kind of ignored no that. Point yeah, it. Yeah. So uh, but anyway, that's Fast and the Furious Supercharged. What an attraction, Jeff. What an attraction. What an attraction. If you're in Florida, you'll see it. <laughs> you don't have to ride it, but you can point it out. Also, some of the worst theming ever of a building. It's just a big gray building that says Fast and the Furious Supercharged on it. It's not really like themed. Maybe or they could just refresh it, add 30 seconds to the end. Fast and the <sighs> Fast and Furious, how about this? Instead of bulldozing it and building a whole new attraction, Fast and the Furious Super Duper Charged. Ooh. I and like you, that. they put like just put like thirty million dollars into a refresh. That sounds good. That sounds yeah. A thirty million dollar duper. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, if you, if you think you could fix Fast and Furious, let us know in the comments. I'd love to read the comments over on RoosterTeeth.com. I love I love all the stuff you post. Uh, and I'll, yeah, speaking of that, well, we'll get to the Q&A right now. Um, turns out, Jeff, I'm going back through the last couple episodes. There were two weeks I just missed the question of the week. I forgot to ask the audience a question of the week to uh, to just randomly send someone a, a theme park map. Sounds, I don't know how I did that. I do. Yeah, they, we call those uh, senior moments. Ah, the yeah. du- duper moments. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's if only we had a producer, Ben, that would have let me know that. Hey, I missed the question, Ben. But uh, and unfortunately, we don't have anyone like that, Ben. All right, let's well, get into the Q and A. We have section. Ben. Wait, what? Who? <laughs> Um, so th- these are questions from the Alicia Stella interview. Uh, okay. Alicia is awesome. Uh, theme Park Stop. Check out her podcast. It's very, One of my very favorite good. interviews. So good. Yeah. So good. Uh, Sim Disorder uh, said, I would love to hear you all talking about shows and parades, even meet and greets. These are parts of the day in a theme park that people look forward to, but don't get a lot of conversations about them. Yeah, the, the um who who said who said that in Sim Disorder. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. That's a great idea. No, it's it, it is true because things like parades and characters like that adds the flavor to a theme park. You know, that kind of adds like there's there's always stuff kind of going on. Mm-hmm. And for a long time, like during COVID, they've kind of killed a lot of the parades and, and the character meet and greets and things. Yeah. And so it, it the parks felt a little bit empty, but now yeah. we're starting to see them come back. Like at the last couple of times I've been to Florida, you start seeing those parades popping up. It's like, okay, it feels alive and it's got a little bit more energy and you know, um, like the, over at Universal, they had the uh, the big Christmas tree and they had just every now and then people just pop out and start dancing around. And even there when I was there last time, uh, it was Mardi Gras and they had like people on stilts walking around. It's like, oh, OK, that's kind of cool. Adds a little bit of extra energy to it. So, yeah, I'd love to talk to that. I'd love to talk to someone who maybe was in a, like in a parade or in an attraction like that. It'd be good. DJ Paint says, have either of you ever heard or seen the film Escape from Tomorrow? It's a film that was filmed in secret inside Disneyland and Disney World without Disney's permission. Maybe that could be worth an episode talking about it have you heard about this movie i have never heard of what you're talking about have you i've seen bits of it and boy is it bad really it's uh it's a clever idea because they literally scribble a film make a, a like a film like while they were there but it's like shots of them walking around and they had just like i mean it's like normal day of a theme park yeah uh but wow it's a, it's a weird story and uh the acting is pretty rough and is it so, anybody we would know of? no no uh, not at all there's some trailers up online you can check it out, but I mean, it's I, I don't I think you can actually watch the full film on YouTube now. It's a cool concept. It's an interesting idea, you know. Like it's also the thing that like Disney at any point could be like, "Yep, we're gonna have, oh, of gonna, gonna shut this down." Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But I think it's one of those things that was so small that no one really can, it never really caught, and so Disney's like, whatever, you know. And I'm sure if anyone tried it again, they'd be like, "All right, we're game over, man." Um, GG. Okay, here we go. It's it's a, a brand new account. GG one 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 eight zero two nine four five one zero six three three four four five one eight one says, 
Uh, Opryland Hotel is still there, but the theme park is gone, sadly. One of my favorite places as a kid. And Dollywood is closer to Knoxville. So I guess we we're talking about Tennessee. Opryland Hotel is still yeah. there. That's yeah, cool. I remember I went to the uh, Opryland theme park, and that's where the Hangman was. How it was, was it? It was really cool. I yeah. was a kid, though, so I'm sure. I mean, it was kind of like a Six Flags as opposed to like a big theme park. What's the Hangman? Uh, it was a hanging coaster where your, your feet dangle down. <laughs> um, and uh, <laughs> yeah, it, it was kind of like uh, we talked about the Great White at SeaWorld. It's, mm-hmm. it's similar to that or like, yeah. like the Hulk. Um, it was like that. It was a really cool attraction. I'm doing yeah. more questions today because I have no answers of the week because there were there was yeah, no questions you... of the week because I messed it up. Uh, Kimmy Rose Accio Fit. Kimmy, who uh, I ran the uh, the princess half marathon with. Oh, yeah. Uh, she said, I picked up the new lanyard and pins, and I was hoping it will be here before I leave for my trip on Universal or to Universal on the 26th, which I think was the, the princess uh, trip. This is These are all from like a month ago. Was Kimmy wearing pins when you saw her? Uh, no, because we were running. So it was like all workout stuff. Mm. Uh, let's say a Lord of, the Ring, uh, Lord of the Rings park does get made, and there's no limitations or drama about how it can or can't look. What ride or show would you like to see? I think it would be cool to see a ride where you're. Uh, where you're Pippin and Mary riding the Ents to fight at Helm's Deep. You're a big Lord of the Rings fan, Jeff. But what would you do for a Lord of the Rings attraction? I would do a water ride, and it would be similar to like like a water flume. Uh, did you see the Hobbit, mm-hmm. the first Hobbit? I think it was the first Hobbit movie with a GoPro where, footage where they're going yeah, down where the they're water. going down the water on the barrels. Yeah, like a lot. I would do something like that. That'd be cool. Yeah, I would love to see um, like a mine car. Type attraction mm. through the mines of Moria. Mm, that'd be cool too. Where it's like, but then you like pass like the Balrog and like Gandalf and stuff. You know what'd be cool? So if they stitched those together. Ooh. And you did like, uh, like maybe like three sets. You go through the mines of Moria, then you go through that, and then I don't know. Yeah. Some, some other place. Well, you, well, you dodge a bunch of arrows in Helm's Deep or what, something. What, what was the, uh, the, the big, uh, the big, uh, castle that, um, that was like built into a mountain that had the ledge that, uh, what's his guy, what's his name ran off of while on fire? Castle Cogliostro? No, no. That's... Castle in the Sky? That's it. Castle How, in the How's sky. Moving Castle. How's Moving Castle. You know, in Lord of the Rings, when How's Moving Castle's there, and uh, and the guy runs off. You know what I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah, that yeah, big, yeah. How's Moving Castle. It wasn't Hell's Deep. Uh, ben, it you wasn't know? Helm's Deep. Do, do you remember? It's the, it's the one with uh, with John, not John Hurt. Um, John Cena. John Cena. When John, John Cena C. was Riley. the- John C. Riley. When John C. Riley was the, the, the king, and then Wormtongue was talking into his yeah. ear. Yeah. And then, then he eventually turns around. And he's like, ah! Oh, and then he catches fire and runs off the thing. Oh yeah. Whatever they did a roller coaster like that, or <laughs> it's like they just light your car on fire and you just go off and you go down it. It's a great idea. That'd be a lot of fun. I think we just built the next ride. Boom! You replace Fast and Furious. You're welcome, Lord of the Rings. Yeah. Matt Ivory says, "Hi, Jack and Jeff. Love you too so much. But I just heard that Disney has their own jail. Please let me know if this is actually a real thing." So. There's always been rumors. It got cold in here all of a sudden. AC. Uh, yeah. Uh, Slater. Um, that's, um, <laughs> so uh, it's... Uh, <laughs> who... Uh, oh, never mind. Keep going. Yeah, you, you see Mario Lopez at the theme parks a lot. They do a lot yeah. of filming of his shows down in the theme parks quite a bit. No, uh, there, so there is a holding area, which some people refer to as the Disney jail, but they don't have like a jail where they lock you up. That would be false imprisonment. Because, you know, Disney doesn't they're not a police station, but they they can like they can they have areas they can hold people. But at no point are they ever restricting you from leaving. Like if you ever like I want out, they can't be like, no, you have to stay. Right. Right. You know, unless you've unless you've broken a law, I think maybe. At well, that that's point. how you usually go to jail. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll look more. I'll look a bit more into that and see what we can do. Uh, Polynesian, which is a great, uh, mm. great username. Great episode, guys. Did you know that the high school mentioned in the episode, Dr. Phillips, that was the one behind Universal, has a list of famous alumni, including Wayne Brady, Joey Fatone, and NFL star, ha ha, Clinton Dix. Oh. A great, a great proposal spot would be the beach of the Polynesian Resort during the fireworks of Magic Kingdom on the bridge outside of Italy at Epcot. So I guess I started talking about places to propose. I don't know, because I, I think the Rose Garden's gone, and I, th- I forget exactly how we got into that, but a lot of people were talking about proposal spots. Um, but yeah, so that that the uh, high school behind there, Wayne Brady was there. That makes sense because he then went and worked at Universal. I mean, he worked over at uh, Beetlejuice at the Graveyard Review. Remember? Uh, I do. You know what else I remember? What's that? Uh, haha, Clinton Dix played for Alabama. Oh, yeah, so. nice. Okay. And last question here. <laughs> well, I'm from you. Uh, it makes sense. You're a big Alabama fan. Yeah. Carty Man Dua 94, Cartman Dua 94 says, Another great episode as always. Me and my partner have just bought our first house and we enjoy listening to the episodes as we paint slash renovate. That's good for you. Mm. I love that. This interview was especially interesting as we in Britain are supposed to have a London resort opening in a few years, a brand new theme park with intellectual property from BBC, ITV Studios and Paramount Pictures. They've announced some lands there, but they're quite generic. One is a spaceport and we're hoping hoping for a Doctor Who ride or two. Mm. Do you have any thoughts on what you'd like to see slash would make a good ride based on British media? 
can you think of anything? Would there be an office attraction? We just go and Ricky Ricky Gervais just berates you for a while or gives you a name task to the, do. There's so many lame jokes I could make. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what, what was it? Is it Peep Show? Is that the one where you see like the people through people's eyes or whatever? That was a, did, did any, no, this is a show. It's a British show. Where it's like you, you're in the head of someone. It's like first person, but you hear what they're thinking. No, mm-hmm. okay. Uh, that that one maybe they could do a show on that. We could, what would be an in betweeners ride, Jeff? Like would there be an in betweeners attraction? Could they get Buckley just to come and jump on your on your That's ride vehicle? That's funny. <laughs> That's funny. You could <laughs> theme park friend. Woo. <laughs> Woo, theme park friend. Oh man, that's great. I don't know. Can you think of anything? You got any? Hey, Doctor Who. Do- yeah, yeah, that, pretty they, easy one. They mentioned a Doctor Who one. That makes that makes a lot of sense, obviously. But I don't know. There'd be like a Shetland ride where you have to go investigate a murder. You, you could do. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you could do uh, it, 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 a lot of procedural crime drama stuff. Mm-hmm. You could do. Um, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, the remake, was in England, right? I think so. I think the the book is the book's England. probably in England. Yeah, you could do something there. Yeah, Willy, Willy Wonka esque. That's true. That's true. So there you go. There's a couple for you. If you have any, let us know in the in the comments as well. What? Uh, here's what you do. What's up? You you have a, a a Charlie and the Chocolate Factory ride, and then you get on the elevator at the end, and then you ride up the glass elevator, and then it turns into a TARDIS, and then you become a Time Lord. <laughs> ooh, 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 ooh. Um, what's that? X Files? I don't know. Anyway, that's fun. Yeah, we can do that. We can do that. Yeah. Ride ride the the Charlie Charlie's uh, elevator to TARDIS yeah. conversion. Yeah, I appreciate that. And David Tennant just high fives you on the way out. So that'll do it for our questions, Jeff. I asked a few more there, but uh, I now have a question for you to answer in the comments over at roosterteeth.com because I totally forgot. The one I was supposed to ask was going to be, what land are you hoping for at Epic Universe? But didn't ask that one during Alicia's interview. But this week's question of the week is what, because we're doing Fast and Furious Supercharged. Obviously, the question is, what is your least favorite attraction you've ever been on that's not Fast and Furious Supercharged? Because that's everyone's number one. Jimmy Fallon. <laughs> I've got a feeling Jimmy Fallon will be uh, the the race race from New York, race to New York. That'll Good be Lord. that'll be a big one for a lot of people. I figured maybe the Harry Potter one because that one that one made you sick. I, that's not the ride's fault. That's me. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I, I certainly didn't enjoy it, uh, but I'm sure it's a lovely ride. Yeah. I just uh, I'm thinking like maybe like the the teapots or the the teacups spinning teacups. I can't do those anymore. Really? Like, yeah. That's just they kinda, make you nauseous. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like going too fast. Absolutely. You know uh, when. Uh, for my first ever date in the sixth grade, uh, I took, uh, well, I won't say her name, but I took this girl to, uh, like she, a state she might fair, be listening. Yeah. And I got on, we got on the swings and I got nauseous and threw up all over myself <laughs> on the swings. Wow. On my first date. Wow. I was covered in puke. And that's how he made And your then mother. I had a, it got even worse. Then I, I was wearing shorts and, uh, I had a ringworm that I had got <laughs> and I was hiding it cause it was embarrassing. And my mom made a stop before we took her home at the at like the Walgreens to buy medicine for my ringworm and announced it. God. And so she knew. She broke up with me. Yeah. No, really? Yeah, we didn't end up. It wasn't Emily. Yeah, no. It was, <laughs> that wasn't a love meant to be? No. No, I'm sorry, Jeff. I'm sorry. Well. She dropped out of high school in the 10th grade. I saw her once. <laughs> you saw her drop out? Well, I saw her after. I saw oh, her in the 11th grade. <laughs> well, she wasn't in the 11th grade, though. No, well, I was. Oh, she, okay. she was working at a gas station. You went on. You went on. Yeah. Well, again, question of the week. That was a weird aside. Question of the week is, what is your least favorite attraction you've ever been on that is not Fast and Furious Supercharged? Answer in the comments over at roosterteeth.com, and I'll randomly pick someone to send an autograph park map to. So that's all you got to do. Just make an account over there. And don't forget, go to store.roosterteeth.com. Buy one of these starter kits, these lanyard uh, pin set starter kits. I love these things. We look so adorable. Yeah. And we look Cutie patooties. I like that you've got little red cheeks. You're like, well, because, yeah, I'm all flushed with excitement. So happy. And he's got the cool logos. And uh, we're going to be releasing a lot more pins throughout the year. So this is your starter kit. You can get a lanyard to put them all on. So store.roosterteeth.com. Grab that. Pick up some shirts while you're there as well. Uh, don't forget to join the Discord down in the link in the description below. Follow us over at youtube.com slash annual pass. Uh, subscribe over there as well. And uh, and because, you know, like if, if you're watching, you should you should subscribe and let your friends know about it. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna be putting content over there. I know we've said that for like months now, but we're going to we've got a plan that we're working on to put content on the YouTube channel that isn't podcast. It would be so much fun if we did it. We're going to do it. We're going to do it. We got to make it happen soon. So that's going to do it for today. Jeff, do you have any uh, anything you learned today? Uh, I think this might be the first one I didn't learn anything. No, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not, I, can't, not, I can't remember a single thing I learned today. Not a, not a lot going on with uh, Fast and Furious Supercharged. Oh, <sighs> I, I learned about the uh, uh, no, no, 
No. Nothing. All right. Well, that's going to do it for us today. Thank you very much, everyone, for listening and or watching Annual Pass. You guys are the best. We love you. Y'all are great. Take care of yourselves. We'll see you soon. Don't ride Fast and Furious Supercharged. Bye. Unless you do, but don't. <laughs> don't.